we're going to teach you how to generate millions of smart pass links for absolutely zero cost. So let's first check in why smart pass links would be right for you. There's three situations. You know your customer's unique information and you want to personalize passes, but you don't have the capability or capacity, or maybe even the time to distribute using the Passkit API. And you want to pre-generate millions of passes without incurring any charge. What we're gonna be taking you through is Passkit's unique smart pass feature. This allows you to generate URLs, web links, to pass records that can include personalized data without having to use the Passkit API. You can generate as many smart pass links as you want without creating a pass record in the Passkit database. Therefore, when you create a smart pass link, that doesn't count towards your pass volume subscription until one of the customers clicks on it. So they are actually free to create. Now there's two types of smart pass links and I'm not gonna get into the technicals here. The hash smart pass link and the encrypted smart pass link. I'm gonna hand over to Patrick who's gonna demonstrate how you can do this for yourself in the Passkit platform. Over to you, Patrick. Great, thank you, Paul. I've already logged in to my account here. Um, so we're going to be using the same account that we've used for other demos before. I'm not going to go through setting up the whole project. I've already set a project up. So I'm just going to be showing you what I have set up. And then we're gonna kind of work backwards from there and see how we can then generate the links for that and add them to Wallet. So what I've done here is I've set up a program and we call it Super Cash Live. It's just a demo that we've been doing with one of our partners. Ultimately, what this allows us to do is generate an Old Navy coupon. Now, the use case for this one here is a scenario where customers can spend money with you the whole year round and every three months, every quarter of the year, they get a voucher for $10, $20, $30, $40, basically denominations of 10 based on the amount of money they spend. You want to reward them for that and send them a uh, personalized coupon with a certain money amount. The scenario is that you're not saying the same coupon to all your customers. You're sending a personalized coupon with a unique coupon code with a unique coupon value to each of your customers that you already know. So the data in this scenario that you already have on hand is you have what you want to give in amounts of voucher to each of your customers. You have the customer's email address and then you have a unique a coupon code that uh, is recognized by the point of sale as well so that in the case when somebody scans it you can have it as so there's quite a few things on the card so we get the expiry date in the front we got the cash amount we want to embed the SKU in a barcode the SKU is ultimately the unique coupon for each code that we're putting in here and on the back of the card we put in the email address and the offer details so very simple card Nothing too special about it, just a card with a bunch of dynamic values. So if we work backwards from here, now, as Paul already mentioned, we have uh, smart pass links and we have two types of smart pass links. We have hashed smart pass links and we have encrypted smart pass links. Now for this next part, it's going to get a little bit more technical. I'm just going to jump to our GitHub, which is essentially our place where we put all our cool code snippets and SDKs, which can use, be used for development in different languages. One of the tools that we put out there to make integration easier and to make smart pass links easier for you is the smart pass link CSV generator. What this tool helps us to do is generate a list of smart pass links of a CSV. So the CSV can contain data that you want on the cards. You simply feed the CSV into this tool and what comes out is a list of unique pass links and as you know csv can contain a lot of data so you can literally use this tool to generate ten thousand hundred thousands even millions of links within seconds now this tool covers encrypted smart pass links essentially what an encrypted link contains is just a whole bunch of garbage data that only our system can decrypt it's not visible to the naked eye the other type of links that we have are hashed smart pass links and hash links essentially contain data together with what we call a signature to then allow us to verify the integrity of that data. So we don't want people to tamper with it. So in both scenarios, that isn't the case. The key difference with the hashed and the encrypted links is that the hash links will still be visible to the naked eye. Somebody can take that payload that's in the URL, simply decode it, uh, since it's for the technical people on you, it's base64 encoded, and they could see what data sits in that URL. They can't tamper with it. If they change the data, uh, it's just gonna fail. Uh, the encrypted links on the other end are the strongest form essentially and they can't be decoded or they can't be read by the naked eye. So this tool simply generates encrypted links. Ultimately, they both do the same thing. It's just a slightly different technology. 
um, hash links are a bit easier to generate. So depending on what, what system you use or what infrastructure you work with, the hash links might be an easier route for you to go because they use a little less complexity to be generated versus the smart pass links, which ultimately are more secure in terms of you can't, you can't read them. They can only be decrypted by our system, but they, they require a bit of extra logic to generate them. That's why we did this tool, super easy. You can just put your CSV and you don't have to worry about writing code. But obviously if you would integrate us directly into your system and you would be generating smart pass links on the fly, you might wanna either see if which, which is most suitable for either hashed or encrypted links. So let me just jump straight into this. Now, what we have here is the code. So we also have published the source code for this tool, which is in Golang. So if you wanna see what's happening and how to encrypt these links, you can just look at the source and you can see. So I'm not gonna do that now. Let's not get that technical. What's most relevant for you will be uh, the code that's in the bin folder here. So bin stands for binary and ultimately what these three files are, are executables that you can run on your system. We have three. We have one if you're running on Linux, you can download this one. If you're running on Mac, you can download the OS X one. And if you're running on Windows, you can uh, download the XE one. So these, one of these is what you'll need to download. That's all you need. Now, in terms of what else we have in here, we have a whole bunch of documentation. So what field name should you use in your CSV? Where do you get your smart pass link URL? Where do you get your um, your key to do the encryption? All the stuff that I'm going to be walking through in the call now is also documented in here together with the commands to execute, what parameters we allow. So depending on what, what you're doing, so if you're doing coupons and members, there's different fields that you can use for the CSV headers and it will make more sense when I jump into the CSV. What we also support with smart pass links is the ability to embed locations or beacons for your individual passes. So we often get asked the question, uh, I'm working with a retailer or I am a retailer that has 3000 locations, but passes are only limited to 10 GPS locations to 10 beacons. How can I do this? Now with the smart pass link tooling, you can also then for each individual pass that you generate, you can pass in a unique location for that particular pass. So that way you could pre-generate a million passes for all your members, or you could pre-generate a million vouchers that you want to send out. And for each voucher, provided that you know the GPS location of what you want to embed into that pass. So maybe from a member you've captured their uh, area code or you've captured the state or you've captured the city or something that allows you to triangulate that uses to its 10 closest locations you can then uh, provide those in the csv and when you generate the pass record each pass will have uh, different um, location codes or beacons in it we also allow you to override images on a pass level or colors so you can really use this tool to customize passes for individuals and you don't need any api logic all you need is to run this tool with a couple of input parameters so with that being said let's jump into the actual generation of the passes so i have already downloaded the tool that i need for my mac here so we can see here i have the encrypted link generator for osx and the other thing that i have here is two csvs and let's just have a look what's in there. Actually, I already have them open here. So this CSV has a couple of things in here. And I'm just going to highlight all of them here. So the first thing we have is the SKU, which as you can see is unique for each row. And each row is going to get one unique pass. Then we have the cash amount here, which is set to $20 for the first ones, then $30 for the next ones, and I believe at the bottom one. I think it goes to 40 at some point. And then we can see email addresses here that I want to show in the pass. And then we have the expiry date, which I'm also setting when I'm issuing the pass. The last thing here is the UTM source, which is an additional parameter that we provide you to track. Um, so essentially in the portal, you can see through which channel you have issued your passes. In this case, I might have multiple CSVs where this CSV, I want to be generating links that I'll send through campaign A. And then I will have a second CSV where I have links that I um, send out through campaign B or I could just make all the links in one file and you could just change the, the UTM code for the records here. Now let's have a quick look on how this is now mapped to our pass template. So if I go back to the designer here um, in the Apple design for example we can see there's an expiry date on the front here. Now how do we know to map this expiry date in the Excel to your template is through this little thing at the bottom here. If you scroll down you can see here I have the expiry date selected and as scrolling down, it tells me the field key here. Now, if you already paid attention, you can see that this field key is exactly the same as the field key that I have at the top of my file here. The same goes for the person email address and super cache. Let's have a quick look. So the super cache is on the front here. Let's get this collapsed. And then we can see here meta.supercache. And then on the back of the card, I have my email address in here, which should be set to person.email. 
email doo -doo -doo, person dot email address here. So as you can see that all maps across to this, that's how our system knows how to map the values from the CSV to the design. And again, all these fields are listed here in the documentation. So all of these fields you can use in your CSV and you can also use them in the design or embed them in the barcode, or you can even use them on your landing page. Facebook pixel functionality has also been released. So you can also embed dynamic data into your Facebook pixel if you want to feed certain data back into there. So it all ties back together very nicely. So what I want to do now is I want to feed this CSV into my uh, link generator tool and then have a look at what's being generated. Now to do so, I'm going to be needing a couple of things. So if we go back to the tool documentation here and we go to how to use, then it tells me what I need here. I need the pre-compiled executable from the bin folder. So that's the one I've already downloaded. Next, I will need my project URL and the project URL we copy from distribution, smart pass link settings in the portal. So let's go back into our portal. Let's go back from the designer. We go to distribution and this is the offer that I'm working with here. So that makes sense. So I'm going to go to smart pass links and there we go. Here is all the data that I'm going to be needing. The first thing I need is the passkit URL. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard. Now I've already cheated a little bit. I've, I've prepared for this here. So all my data is in here already, but let, let's just copy paste the link here. And then the next thing that we're going to be needing is the project encryption key. So again, we need to go into the smart pass link settings and then download the encryption key at the bottom. So let's go here, project key, copy to clipboard. I already have it here, but let's just copy it. Now, then next we want to run, we have the CSV already. So in the examples folder in the repo, um, we have the CSVs as well. So we got two sample CSVs in here. We have one for coupons and we have one for member data. Now these CSV contain all the possible fields that you can put in here with some sample data. You don't need to set all this. You only need to add the fields that you want to be using. So you can see for my CSV here, I only need these five fields. So that's all that's in there. There's no need to bulk it up with all the other stuff if you're not using it. So just pick the fields you want to use and, and build your CSV based on that. But it's super handy so you can see what the format is for everything. Let's go back. So what else do we need? So we've downloaded, so we've created a CSV. We've ensured the CSV contains the correct headers. And now we can run the tool. Now to run the tool, this is the command format here, but let's have a quick look here at what goes into the actual parameters. So the first parameter that we need to pass into the command is the path to your CSV file, which I'll, I'll get to in a little bit when I run it. It's just basically telling the tool where the CSV is located that it needs to use to generate the links. The out, so what is the file that we should write to? And then the two variables that we just grabbed, so the project URL and the project encryption key. Now I've already written it out here. This is how you run a command from the command line. So you do need access to either your terminal in OS X or Linux, or in Windows, you can use command prompt. And the same thing there, the, the, the way you structure the command is, is very similar. So you put the name of the command, you put in. In this case, I'm running this command from the same directory as where my files are. So let me just quickly go to there. Okay, so I already have this file in my directory. So if we look in the directory here, I can see Old Navy Coupon CSV. This is the file we want to write to. That file doesn't exist yet in this directory. If the file does exist, it will be overwritten. So keep that in mind when, you, when you're doing this. And then we need the two parameters, URL and key. So the URL I just copied from the portal and the key I also copied from the portal. So this is what our whole command looks like. Now, this is just so that we can read it. This is ultimately how I would run it with everything on the same line. So I'm just going to copy paste this. In my terminal, I've already, I'm in the correct folder. So the folder I'm in in the terminal is this folder here. Ultimately, terminal is just a way for you to talk to your computer and tell it what to do without getting visual. So this is what we call a GUI, a visual graphical user interface. And terminal would just be typing like you tell the computer and writing what you want to do. So I'm just going to copy this here and simply press enter. And you saw how quick that was. This just generated the file just like that, a couple of milliseconds. So opening this with Excel so we can see what's in there. And there we go. This is my output file. This is the original file. So you can see they're very much the same. So the first couple of columns are the same. And we can now notice there's a sixth column that's been added, with, which contains the past URL. And as you can see, this doesn't make any, if I can lower it a bit, this doesn't make any sense. You can't read this, you can't decode this, you can't decrypt this. Only 
Peskit will be able to decrypt this because we have the matching um, key that goes with the encryption key that we gave you. So this we can now visit and you can visit this from your mobile, you can visit it from your desktop browser. This is just a link that what it will do is as soon as I visit this, it will take the data payload, it will decrypt it based on what project we have, so it knows what to decrypt it with, and then it will create the pass record with the data that sits in the payload, and then it will redirect to the pass render page, which everyone's already familiar with. Those are the proprietary Peskit landing pages that take care of completely doing uh, all the device detection and user uh, flows for you. So if you come in on an Apple device, you're gonna get present the Apple user journey. You come in on a Google device, you get present the Google user journey. You come in on a desktop, you get redirected to your mobile because that's ultimately where we want you to be. So copy paste this. I'm just gonna run it from the web browser now, but run it from your mobile, send it via email, send it via SMS, do what you want with it. There we go. And now we have our card issued now. This because I'm in Safari is presenting me with the Apple journey, but I'm just going to show you guys in Google here again These are proprietary landing pages. They take care of the user journey It doesn't matter what device you come on the user will be presented with the correct journey So in this case, let's just do Google pay for desktop because Google pay provides us a really good render of the pass And that way I don't have to mirror my phone screen. So let's see if this matches what we set up So let's go back into a portal designs so at the Google design on the front, this is all fixed text, except for under the barcode, we put our SKU. Now the link that I just visited, the SKU is ending on 159. So let's have a look if that matches. Ta-da, 159, okay, so that's our correct code. Then the expiry date, the 30th of June at midnight, that is correct because the expiry date here is set to the 30th of June at midnight. Cash amount, $20, $20, and then email should be patrick at pesca.com, and we do, we have email here, patrick at pesca.com. We created about, how many links did we create? We created a thousand links here. So let's quickly have a look at our dashboard, because what I shouldn't be seeing now is a thousand links. Now, I, I did some testing with this a while back, so we can see here, there's only a few links created and that's because I was just trying things. There's one installed, which is the pass that we just put into Google Pay. So you can see that that's it. Really nothing to it, super simple. I can create as many passes as I want. Only when links are clicked, it's showing up in the system here. Now, just one other quick thing. This was only a thousand records. I have another second file in here that I just did pre-generated this for already. So the second file I have in here is called coupon simple long list that's not that long i believe but i just want to quickly show you guys the speed i believe in this file we have 11,969 coupons so let's just run that and see that this yeah again it takes a second they're super quick so i did some load testing i think last week for a couple of million passes and it, it took like five six seconds it's super super fast so with that i'm gonna hand it back over to paul hopefully you guys can see how super easy it is and hopefully this inspires some great ideas on how you guys can integrate this into your systems awesome thank you so much patrick that is absolutely fantastic I mean, hopefully you can see that the perfect application for yourself where you need to personalize passes, whether that's personalizing membership cards, personalizing coupons or in tickets, but you're not necessarily distributing using the Passcode API. And as you saw, you can generate or pre-generate all of these links for free and only start to generate a record in Passkit when your customers visit that link. There were some good resources that Patrick shared. Obviously, if you're watching this video in the help.passkit.com, the links will be below this video. Otherwise, you can visit these short links for the encrypted smart pass link generator, bit.ly forward slash SMP CSV, and instructions for creating hash smart pass links, bit.ly forward slash SMP help. Hopefully this is really helpful. And as Patrick said, we're looking forward to seeing really exciting, great looking personalized passes using this tool. Thanks a lot. Bye.